Okay, welcome everyone to our Open Ethereum Summit panel session titled Meet the Future of COBOL. In this session, we will hear from our three amazing panelists who all have taken the COBOL programming course and obtained valuable insight from this critical business application programming language. They all may have come from different backgrounds, but one thing that unites them is their passion and interest in mainframes and in COBOL. Before we get started, let's do a virtual round the table introduction, along with sharing our journey into mainframes and how we all got into this to COBOL. My name is Satanto, I'm a computer science student from Singapore, and I'm one of the committer for the COBOL programming course. I was first introduced to mainframe back in 2019, thanks to a Coursera course from GSPST, and after falling in love with the green screen, and yes, I do think that it's still very much useful and cool. I learned about the COBOL programming course and joined as a summer mentee last year. And now, over to you, Jade. Thank you, Hartanto. Um, so my name is Jade Walker, and I have been, I guess, um, I was introduced to Mainframe, I think it was about last year, but there is a little bit of a caveat to that. Um, I have a parent that has been on the Mainframe for her whole entire career. Um, currently, right now, I am apprenticing on Z Systems. I'm really enjoying it. And so um, off to Angie. Hi, thank you. My name is Angie Mejia, and I'm a student at East Carolina University. I live in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And I was recently hired by Union, an insurance uh, company. And uh, I was introduced uh, to COBOL in my community college, then at the university uh, by my instructor, Cameron Say. And after that, it helped me a lot with, you know, to find uh, a job. So thank you. And next is Caitlin. Hi, I'm Caitlin Mooney. Um, I started out in sort of spring 2019-ish, I think, I had taken a course uh, at my community college, Bergen Community College, where I took some mainframe stuff, learned about mainframe, doing the uh, um, hackathon, master the mainframe, now called Z Explore. Um, really enjoyed that. Eventually, I went to NGIT, where I was taking some courses um, that I just found was really having the background was really helpful. Um, then when looking for jobs, I started looking to the IBM courses, found the COBOL course, so it was really interesting. And um, now I'm working here at JP Morgan Chase. That's really cool. And Caitlin, you said that you took the COBOL programming course uh, some time ago. What was your experience in taking the course and how did you find it? It was really great. It was really interesting too. I got to do it through VS Code, so connecting to the mainframe the same way that they have Z Explore now, um, through VS Code and learning more about like Node.js and all those um, useful tools. It was really, really interesting and really friendly. Like, of course, I had taken um, done some work on master mainframe, so I learned about the green screen there, which is tons of fun, of course. But it also, it was really exciting to be able to do it through VS Code and use Zoe and all those tools. Um, the newer tools, as they say. Um, yeah, and I think for, with our couple programming course, we really want anyone who even doesn't have any technical knowledge to be able to learn COBOL and pick up a new skills on the way. And Angie, you are yourself a student. Uh, what do you think about uh, how we connect to the system via VS Code? And when you took the course, uh, I should say, how do you find it? And is it any helpful when you, is it helpful when you try to basically find employment in the area? Yes, uh, at the beginning, you know, uh, our instructor uh, showed us how to do it uh, through the ISPF and the mainframe and all that. And then uh, we did it through the BS code. So, uh, so he was, um, it, we were doing all these labs from the open mainframe project. And the, this COBOL course, um, I find it interesting because it was like, it was, uh, different than other COBOL courses because you don't, it, this is, um, 
Well, this is a uh, target to for uh, mainframe si systems administrators. So you don't have to do the, the whole uh, programming thing, but you have to resolve the problems. So at the beginning with the ISPF, yeah, it was a really a little difficult. And then, but with the BS code, it was more easy. You know, it's, uh, with Zoe, it's like uh, you can connect all the things. And with this uh, course, I like it because it shows you just, uh, well, it, not, it doesn't show you just the syntax. It show you the flow of the program. Like this, uh, this section is for this, and this division is for that one. And why you had to include that section or that division in your program. It's not like, um, like when you are learning a new uh, programming language, it's like, uh, okay, this is the syntax, how you, you can, um, a, how you can uh, do an if or else or something is, is when, when you're in the real world of the COBOL, you need to know how to do it and why. Because it's not just uh, it, give me an if or an else, it's just, it's, it's because it's sequential. So you had to know what, what is going on, what it goes first, you know, and then the other section. So that's, that's, that's why I like this, um, this course and help me, help me a lot to find um, uh, a job because it has, when you're, uh, you're doing that with the open mainframe and you're doing the labs with IBM too. So IBM, you have the background of I, IBM. So you can learn uh, badges or in, in the resume, you can say, I did uh, these labs, I, IBM labs, through the open mainframe uh, project course, free courses, you know, that, that they have. So it is like, um, it's, it's like, again, a little, a little bit of experience when, when you just have to do the, the theory, you know? So yeah, I, I, I include that on my resume. And I went to the job fair, uh, the IBM job fair that they have, and it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. That's that's nice, Angie. And Kate, I know that unlike our other two panelists, you didn't come from a technical background, and but you recently took the IBM apprenticeship program. How was it? And when you were there, they obviously taught you various things. And what do you think it's like to study COBOL? And why do you decide to remain in this field at the end? Um, yeah, sure. So, I mean, I wouldn't say that I came from a completely non-technical background. I'd be lying if I <laughs> said that that was the case. But what I can say is that um, I hadn't done a fully technical job in quite some time. And when I'm talking about quite some time, I'm talking about like years and years and years, right? And so um, I hadn't really considered it until um, I had started taking like a data analytics um, boot camp. And then um, after that, being on LinkedIn and being um, just in the community um, for, you know, mainframe community, because I had heard about it through a hackathon, actually, that IBM Z was sponsoring. And so I was so interested in the technology, then I went after it. <laughs> and so um, that's when um, Sudarshana actually introduced me to the pre-apprenticeship. And so going through the pre-apprenticeship program is when I took the course um, COBOL programming with VS Code. And that is how, um, you know, I really kind of um, got into it. And, and then that pretty much led me all the way up into this um, formal apprenticeship with m and Bank. That's where I'm currently employed. Um, and I will say, Angie, you brought up a really great point in terms of um, like, you know, being in the field and like, 
you know, on our jobs now versus, you know, um, taking the course. I think one of the really important things that um, doing that course um, showed me was working with the green screens as well as working in Zoe. The two different um, development platforms is really important. And I think that, um, I mean, I, on, you know, currently in my job, we probably mostly use green screens, but that doesn't say like we use um, Zoe for a lot of our, like you can make notes and do our extracts and things like that. So, and I honestly, I don't really think that um, like me or my cohort would have known about Zoe if it wasn't for the course, truth, truthfully. I think, um, you know, many of my um, teammates have been, you know, programming in COBOL for a long time, like their whole careers, that, and they did not have Zoe. So they don't know it. Um, so it's something that we can bring to the table, um, you know, as, you know, being new to the platform and showcasing new ways of working with it. So I think it's great. Uh, yeah. So I really think that so we have the potential to basically introduce newer people to the platform. And if you see our Cobalt Blackman course, we have like 10,000 IDs being issued and there are a lot of people taking the course every day. And at one point we can have hundreds of users connected to the system at once. And Caitlin, uh, I know that you have experience in other programming language in the past. And how do, how do you think COBOL compare to other programming language that you know of? I think it was COBOL was definitely a lot of fun. It wasn't my um, first language, that's for sure. I started out with more so with like Python, C, and C++. But it was also it was really interesting to see um, that technically it's a legacy language. It doesn't mean it's not like it's used all the time now. But it was really great to get under the hood almost and see how... Um, the programs actually run like this is the same language this is the language that all these credit card transactions run on um so it was really cool like people talk about that they talk about how how many processes run on COBOL um like job applications and um for like the government um really all the like when people do the the unemployment um benefits and that type of stuff it's really interesting to be able to see like all those applications that people are constantly creating transactions on all run on COBOL. So it's really cool to be able to get under the hood, be able to build up some skills with it too, um, and get get some confidence. So I really liked how the, the courses were focused on like building confidence personally. Um, so that really appealed to me, but it was, it was definitely really interesting. I had had a professor that he was teaching us C++, but he was a pro COBOL programmer, didn't actually know C++. So it was really interesting to be like, oh, that's why we were taught things this way. Um, because it's it's definitely a very interesting language and I'm still very new to it, but um, it was really, really interesting to get under, under the hood and see like, this is what, this is how modern programming is based off this. Uh, so that was pretty interesting and really exciting. Yep, and I think there's a lot of benefits to COBOL, as you said previously. I personally think that COBOL have, is easily digestible by anyone, even non-technical person, which is, why I really, which is why I really enjoy learning COBOL in the first place. Uh, but in your opinion, and any of you are free to basically take up this question, uh, what are the pros and cons of COBOL? Like what makes it uh, the best language at doing what it does? And in your opinion, what is it most suitable at basically? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> well, I believe COBOL is not for everybody. I mean, you, you, because it's like a sequential, so, you really uh, need to know what's the order or what are you doing exactly, which files you have to open and why, and the way that COBOL works because it's completely different than is the, the other uh, languages. And well, the, um, 
an advantage of COBOL, I believe, is uh, that you can just read it. <laughs> you can read it, you know, and you you understand what is happening. But yeah, the the order, the order, I think, is the 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 key for COBOL. Yeah, I would I would definitely say um, how um, COBOL is, you know, of course it's tied to Z systems. And so one of the huge advantages of, you know, working on mainframes is how fast it is. I mean, I was literally poking around um, a data set last week that was 400, over 400 million records deep. And I made a query and like less than 60 seconds, I found what I was looking for. And you can't say that with every system. I mean, you're if you're looking at like SQL or maybe some other querying languages, things like that, the fact that COBOL is kind of inherently attached to, you know, Z systems and the quickness of it, I think is just, um, it's a huge bonus. Caitlin would, would say you. <laughs> um, I would add a bit to piggyback off, I think what you guys were saying was that like, it, it's very readable. Um, so even if, um, if you don't know a ton, say so more of the business analyst side, you can still like be able to get your fingers in and understand what's going on just in the sense of um, being able to read it and understand kind of what's going on. Um, and if you're just doing something like trying to do like a quick little query or whatever, but you have like millions of files, you can do that very quickly and very accurately. So it's definitely a very useful tool. It's very precisely with numbers and because uh, it, it was created for businesses, so is it handled all the financial, all, all the numbers uh, pretty good. That's why it's, it's still here, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep, and just to carry over from what Angie said, I believe there was a survey done by the Cobalt Working Group a while back. And they did find that there are still many, hundreds of millions of COBOL lines still in production today. And I believe that you might have seen some of them in your workplace as well. And, and in your opinion, if, if someone came to you, a student perhaps, and asking about future opportunities, in computer science or in technology, would you think that it is a good idea to advise them to basically learn COBOL, learn mainframes, and try to see if they like it? I yeah, I would say that the opportunities are there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many um so many opportunities. There's pretty much every industry, if you like, like government, transportation, so many airlines use this. Um, so many of the insurance companies, all the banks use it. Um, all of like, it's our retail. It's very heavy in retail um, and shipping companies use it too. Um, it's hard to think of an industry that doesn't run on it, in my opinion, but um <laughs> That might require a little extra creativity to come up with one that doesn't use it. Um, so it's definitely very useful and there are not enough people that do it. So it's really great. Um, these courses are really great and, uh, for people that say don't necessarily know where they're going yet in CS because there's so many different areas of computing and, IT and of tech that this is an area that needs more people that has a very, I think, as Jade, I think, and Angie had mentioned, very welcoming communities. Um, and helpful communities. I know when I've helped had some of my friends work on um, say the Z Explorer and they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. There are some questions and Hartanto answers them um, like right away, answers their questions. And that's always really cool to see how you can get to know people and how helpful it is. Um, and I think uh, COBOL is always evolving. So now you can make a uh, applications is behind the cloud too. So it is it's, it's very competitive with the other languages. I mean, Java is good, yeah, but I think COBOL is like more complete because it is always evolving 
And you can do a lot of things now with uh, applications, with mainframe, with the cloud. I mean, it's, it's, it's the package, you know, of all these things in one programming language. Yep, and I do have to agree with Angie there. Uh, COBOL is really a evolving language. And a couple of months ago, when IBM announced their new version of Enterprise COBOL, there's actually some new feature which I'm quite interested at to basically add to the course. And it's, it got to the point where I have to ask our system programmer to basically install the new version of the compiler as soon as possible so that I can try it out and perhaps in the future release a new version of the course for the participants to take. Uh, but uh, Angie and Kate, you are both students or newly graduate. And so I'm going to I have to ask you the hard question here. What do you think must change in order for students to be aware of COBOL and basically learn that there's a whole hidden industry or basically they say it as an IT best kept secret so that they can learn about it and in the future basically have a career in there? Well, I was uh, very fortunate that my community college has an excellent program and they include COBOL and AS400, you know, like an introduction. And, but I think uh, is it, the universities uh, need to include COBOL in their curriculum again, because it, when you're exposed to the different languages uh, like COBOL, Java, Python. So at the beginning, you can see it, there is more, you know, just the Java and C++. And you, you can have uh, a choice to see uh, what do you like, you know, in the future. So I, I believe for the, uh, they have to start, you know, at the community college or universities to include this program to include COBOL in their curriculum. I would agree that a lot of like my, I also learned about mainframe through my community college and it's because the uh, community colleges are really looking to help their students as much as possible because a lot of companies don't always think of community colleges when they're looking for either employment or internships and stuff. Um, but companies, um, so they're, they're always looking for different avenues, different ways, different um, opportunities for students. So they really share like, hey, this is one avenue you can pursue that a lot of times universities maybe don't. Um, but from like terminal talk, Christy Joy Sh uh, Schroeder had mentioned on an episode, companies really need to step up and say, hey, these are the skills we want. Like we have all these, I mentioned all these industries, but we need companies to start telling schools, be like, hey, we want you guys to teach these things. Um, we want you to be teaching these tools. Um, so we definitely need to see more involvement from the industry to be like, hey, this is what we want you to start teaching sometimes um, or just bringing it up in classes uh, so that way we can gain more people in the workforce because there's not enough people to fill these roles. There's so many opportunities um, and so many jobs that they need. So definitely seeing more industry participation going to universities and being like, we don't just want Java. We also want these other languages. This is what we need. Um, so I think that's a big, uh, big aspect too. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. Um, a lot of it has to do with exposure and perception. Um, I would, to add on to that, I would say that, um, for example, I mentioned a, a data analytics boot camp that I went through that kind of, um, you know, got me into, back into the world, I guess, of um, technology. And that was actually done through the Urban League of Sacramento. And so I would say for those that are not enrolled, they're not currently students and, you know, in a university or any type of college to have some type of boot camp or introductory thing that um, people who are just interested in technology could take, I think would be a beautiful thing. And just to go back a little bit, 
Um, Kate, you said that you took the master the mainframe or now IBM CX4. Uh, do you think having uh, experience through that type of course or mainframe you know, course help you in basically doing COBOL now and uh, the, depending your skill on COBOL and how it interacts with other things? I definitely, definitely agree with that. Um, I think having one of the things I really liked that I found about a lot of about those learning um, say the uh, the Z Explorer and the learning platforms that um, IBM and other uh, mainframe project tools provide is that they have all these skill. It's definitely very skill building and confidence building. So and it works together really well. So you end up feeling really good about what you've learned. You're like, wow, I feel like I've I've learned something. I feel like I was able to demonstrate what I did, especially the the hands-on aspect um, is really, really great. Um, just like, wow, I, did, I, I felt, feel very accomplished, especially if you're not super, if you're new to tech or not super comfortable with it um, or just getting started. Um, and it, it's really, really good for skill building and confidence building, I feel like, which allows you to stick with it and get out and get your hands and really allows you to feel comfortable and safe getting your hands dirty um, while learning so much. Yeah, I do think that, that there are a lot of things you can learn there. And one of the unique things about COBOL is that in the uh, little in the industry that COBOL is really used in connection with other subsystem, such as Kix or DB2 or even IMS. And in your opinion, basically, um, how should I phrase this? <laughs> Um, how important do you see COBOL having a role in our and do you think that in the future it can go away or it will go away or will people migrate to even another programming language? Since I think if you see on the news, people say that COBOL is dinosaur, or even people are looking to basically the re platform from that one platform to another and change COBOL to another language. I think we can all say um, that it'll definitely be here for a while. I feel like um, companies need it. It's really COBOL and a lot of these um, like Bex Assembler, like you, you need that to, um, and an understanding of that to comply with uh, regulations, um, government regulations that, the, the term um, for companies that, uh, you know, are really large, like um, insurance companies that you need to have safety nets. You can't just, um, you, you can't just lose data uh, for, and, you know, people need to be able to, to check their accounts and always see their, their balances, for example. Um, and so the, the safety aspects are so important. Um, to maintain availability. I think uh, both Angie and Jade would agree and go on more. Yes, I think- I, I uh, completely agree. Go ahead, Angie. Oh, sorry for that. <laughs> um, I think the future of COBOL is like, um, it's gonna be here for a long time because change all the COBOL programs, it will take a lot of time and a lot of money. And I think uh, because it's evolving and adapting to all this new technology, I believe it's gonna be here for maybe another 50 years. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I think it would be way too expensive and cumbersome to um, try and replace all the COBOL programs out there. And um, what's that old saying that they say, like, you know, don't fix what ain't broke. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's been, that's, it's solid. It's, you know, it's incredibly solid, um, you know, so why, you know, why replace it? I, I would, that would be my question. Why, why would you replace it? So. 
it's definitely a risk to reliability, but it's also a, a huge benefit. It keeps growing and changing. There are new versions of COBOL um, constantly coming out, the, the updates. It's evolving to meet our needs. And um, as long as we make sure that COBOL is evolving, then I think it'll be here for a really long time because it's certainly a very reliable language and um, definitely needed part of society that not everybody thinks about. You know, every time you have to buy something or um, take money out or uh, have, you know, health insurance, a lot of insurance companies use it um, and it helps maintain our system. So I think it'll be here for a good long while. I do remember when I was first introduced to COBOL, I learned that there are a lot of credit card transactions that the programs itself that are written in COBOL. And I really they do think that it's amazing that such a, such a programming, such such programming language with lots of history behind it are still being used today. And it plays a huge role in our economy today. And do you guys have any tips for basically students or reskillers who are looking to get into the industry now? Getting involved in the in a community whenever you decide like, hey, I want to look into something. Not that um, you're closing any doors, but when it, when you go into a community such as our open mainframe project community. Um, it's not only is it incredibly welcoming, but they have all these resources and tools and courses to help you build your confidence and skill set, which I think is incredibly imp uh, important, especially for people like me, say, with anxiety. Um, it really helps build that confidence, which allows me to feel good about my programming. Uh, so I know I really like that aspect. Uh, I think uh, everyone that wants to work in the IT area, needs to know at least the basic of Cobol. And because sooner or later, you're gonna see some Cobol, you know, and you need to at least understand what the program is doing, or if you need to help another programmer with, the, with some uh, troubleshooting. So, it's, it's, it's so vast, I mean, it's everywhere that sooner or later, you're gonna see it. I mean, you, you, you're gonna get in contact with it. So at least uh, learn the basic of COBOL. And, and so it, besides that, it's good for your resume. <laughs> so uh, if you can get in, in, if you can learn COBOL and all the mainframe skills, JCL, kicks, I mean, just to explore, you know, that you have another options. Um, it will be good for, uh, for the knowledge, for your resume, and sooner or later, you're going to use it. Yeah, I would... Um definitely say just as far as advice is um, go out there and ask questions. Don't be shy. Um, don't be shy to show your enthusiasm for a subject. There are, are plenty of us who are out here who want to talk to you. Um, get a part of, uh, like, just insert yourself into a community. <laughs> it's a great way to see whether you'll like it or not, or, you know, whether you're, you even like the technology, but just don't be shy. We're, we're all here. We've all been where you've been. So just, you know, come and join us. That's what I would say. I still remember a couple of years ago when I first was introduced to me, Dream. Back then, uh, it was Master the Mainframe, there's a Slack channel. And I remember when I ask questions, people are always very helpful. And I think it's something which is really unique to the Mainframe area. The people are helpful, they are nice, they want you to learn, and they want you to basically try the industry and see if it fits you. And I think that's really a unique thing. And it's really, a reason why I'm still along here. So, 
another question. Can I just say something really sure. quickly? Because Hartanto, you're being super humble right now. Like Hartanto is like the main one on those Slack channels who are solving your problems. Like, I don't think you can be anywhere in the mainframe community and not touch Hartanto in some kind of form or reason. So I just want to give some kudos to you because you are out there and you are like on it. So thank you for that. Appreciate you. Just so helpful. So helpful. It's like a little genius. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Okay, so obviously, as part of the Kobo Pokemon course, I couldn't skip this question, but do you guys have any feedback for our course? Do you guys want to see basically anything added to the course, any improvement, any changes? to better suit your needs or whatever you think might help the industry grow. I love the labs. The fact that, that one of the things that attracted me to, to this course when I was looking at them um, was I was like, what courses have labs? Um, particularly for things like COBOL and whatnot. And it's like this, this class, it's the one that I took. It was like a 16 hour in total course of courses. Took a little more time than that, but it was interactive and had labs. And so um, I think I like having quizzes more often being like, hey, what is this? What is this? What is that? Um, just because that helps you really get the bad when you have to answer the questions for the badge. But um, I loved the hands on aspect of the labs. That was so cool to me. Um, so seeing more courses with labs, like, that would be amazing um, personally, because I wish every course was like that. Um, I thought it was pretty great. Yeah, I think the labs are the main thing because it's how you gain experience when when you're still uh, at the university or the community college. That's that's the way. The labs and you can uh, say that on your resume that you you have you know a little experience or hands on labs, and that's gonna help you in, in this uh, in the IT area. The practice, the practice is 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 it's like experience, you know, and that's uh, I think it's more important than the theory behind that. I I would totally agree with that. The hands-on experience, um, I think, is just so important. I mean, you can be watching a video or reading something, but um, when you're actually doing it, it's a whole new territory. And so, um, you know, I think that's an awesome part. And, you know, I think the more, the better. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I think, I think it's real cool. Thanks, everyone. I believe that we are almost time. So in our last few minutes here, let's go quick. On the table, do we see together any final thoughts or whatever you want to share to our listeners? Perhaps any advice or tips? So, Caitlin, do you want to go first? The the, the talkative one, yes. Um, so I think this is a really great way to get into the community and start asking questions because when you take these labs, you'll, you'll run into, you know, problems, of course. You have to solve challenges. And... Um, gets you comfortable asking questions. So getting getting yourself comfortable, not being scared to ask questions is a really big thing. And I think this kind of helps you feel more comfortable. Like these, I want to be asking questions, get to know people, learn answers. Um, so I think this is a really great way to get to know the community and to getting involved. And because at the end of the day, why are, why do we want people taking this course? Because we we want people, or why, why do people want to be taking this course? Because they hopefully they are taking this, say, to hopefully get a job or that type of thing. So um, as the, their, their end goal for this learning or to be better in their field and gain knowledge. So I think, um, that this course can really help people accomplish that goal um, and is really helpful in accomplishing that um, that goal of either growing their skill set um, and learning and becoming involved in the community and to network, network, network. So I think too that this course is a good refresh too for, you know, for people that 
learned COBOL maybe two or three years ago. So this one's a good practice and a refresh for it. And for the new people, for the students, maybe the first COBOL program that they see, this is like, mm, this is not for me, but just give it a try, give it a try. Uh, Open Mayfrey has good uh, labs, COBOL labs, and that you can make it for free too. And they have a good guidance and just give it a try and, and see if this is, you know, for you and, and you can have uh, the knowledge for free too, for a little bit of your time. And it's, 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 it's gonna be good for, because you will see how different is to think sequential, you know, uh, from the other uh, languages. And you can see maybe the big picture, what is behind the blockchain, the, 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 the credit cards. So you can have, it's good for your knowledge and see how all these things really work. So just give it a try and see if maybe you will like it. Mm -hmm. Yep, I, I agree there. I just say, take the course and come find us. Short and sweet. I do agree with you all. And at the end of the day, for me at least, Kobo is simply not a language. And I do really like to invite everyone to give it a try. Give it a shot, see if you like it. If you do, then it might end up as a career for you. But if you don't, that's perfectly fine. And with that, I believe that we are at the end of a schedule. Thank you, everyone. And see you all later. Thank you so much for having us, Sartana.